Jessica for The Developer Show. This is your weekly update on the coolest developer news from Google. The latest Crashlytics Flutter plugin introduces two new Fatal APIs, a convenience API that plugs directly into the Flutter error dot on error, and a more generic API that allows you to specify the error and set the trace. Both APIs report exceptions as fatal events, providing a way to distinguish between the priority of the issue in the same intuitive way like on native Android and iOS apps. Instead of waiting for the user to quit and reopen the app, the new fatal APIs, they're on demand. On demand means that the report is sent to Crashlytics as soon as it's logged, providing you with a real-time view into the issue within your Flutter apps and eliminating the causes where your users don't relaunch the apps for a long time or at all. We release three big data flows to general availability for real-time streaming and machine learning. First is Dataflow Prime. Dataflow Prime allows users to take advantage of both horizontal auto-scaling, more machines, and vertical auto-scaling, larger machines with more memory, automatically for your streaming data processing workloads with batch coming in the near future. Second, Dataflow Go. Dataflow Go provides native support for Go for both batch and streaming data processes workloads. Finally, Dataflow ML. Dataflow added out-of-the-box support for running PyTorch and Sidekick Learn models directly within the pipeline. The new Run Inference Transform enables simplicity by allowing models to be used in the production pipelines with very little code. Make sure to check out the Getting Started guides for these. We have added our 2022 Diversity Annual Report as a public data set in BigQuery, Google Cloud's powerful data warehousing tool. The data includes demographical data on workforce representation, hiring, and attrition of employees at Google, including leadership. You can see our hiring data by race, ethnicity, gender, and intersectional hiring over time by region and more. While Google's diversity data set can help users compare their own data sets to Google's current and historical trends, DEI data is only useful when analyzed in the context of other relevant data sets. That's why Google also includes other public data sets in BigQuery, such as related industries, DEI data, talent, and graduation pools. By doing so, users can run a simple query that then can compare Google's hiring and representation to their related industries. We explored how to build a generalist agent to play many video games simultaneously. Our model trains an agent that can play 41 Atari games simultaneously at close to human performance and can also be quickly adapted to new video games via a fine tuning. This approach significantly improves upon the few existing alternatives to learning multiple game agents, such as temporal differences, learning, or behavioral cloning. Some key takeaways are from this. First, don't optimize for return, just ask for optimality. The idea is that training an agent on a range of experience, from beginner to expert level, exposes the model to a wide range of varieties and variations in gameplay, which in turn helps it extract useful rules of gameplay that allows it to become successful under any circumstance. Second, scaling up multiple game model size to achieve better performance. The performance increases predictability with larger model size. In particular, its performance appears to have not yet hit a ceiling, and compared to other learning system performance gains, are more significant with increase in model size. Last, pre-trained multi-game decision transformers are fast learners. Multi-game decision transformers can be considered pre-trained models capable of being fine-tuned rapidly on small new gameplay data. We announced the first full version release of the open source quantum programming framework, CIRC 1.0. CIRC is a Python framework for writing, running, and analyzing the results of quantum computer programs. It was designed for near-term quantum computers, those with a few hundred qubits and a few thousand quantum gates. Several of our libraries were built on top of CIRC enabling different quantum-producing research areas like TensorFlow Quantum. Also, numerous quantum-producing cloud services from companies in the industry have also integrated with CERC. Here's a key takeaway from what we've learned. 
as quantum producing hardware continues to grow in scale and complexity, we will be expecting that making software to support this growth will be essential to continuing meaningful research and progress. Going forward, we will need an ever wider set of frameworks, programming languages, and libraries to achieve quantum computing's promise. The CodeJam World Finals are coming up on August 5th. CodeJam is Google's longest running coding competition. Participants have worked their way through multiple rounds of algorithmic coding challenges over the last few months. And now the top 25 competitors will face off at the World Finals on August 5th. Tune into the live stream during the round to see the action unfold. Hear from CodeJam engineers about the problems the finalists are tackling and see who will be crowned the Code Jam 2022 World Champion, winning the grand prize of $15,000. Head over to the link to learn more and keep up with all the Code Jam World Finalist action. See you on the scoreboard. To learn more about all this week's stories, make sure to check out the description box below for all the links. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, and stay safe. I'm Jessica for The Developer Show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Right? I know what I'm doing. I've done this before. Hi.